Hello, everyone. This is Gary Sams, the Chief Wellness Officer for eBix Benefits Administration and Wellness. And I think I'm probably safe in saying that most of us probably have an unmet goal that we would like to achieve. Whether it's related to our health, like losing weight, or a financial goal, like saving money for a new car, we all have something that we are trying to achieve. Well, in this month's webinar, we have our Senior Health and Wellness Coach, Lindsay Brelsford, to help us with a realistic plan for setting and reaching goals. So with that, take it away, Lindsay. Hello, today we're gonna go over some tips and tricks for setting goals and achieving them. The most important parts of any personal change are knowing why you wanna make it and having the desire to make it. If you wanna kick cigarettes or lose weight, for example, your method and success in reaching that goal may rely on recognizing its impact on your life and the value of changing it. You may have heard people say, what is your why? You wanna be healthier for your grandkids. You wanna fit into your old genes. You wanna have more energy. You should know why you want to make a change. Why do you wanna lose 50 pounds or run a marathon or drink more water? The next step is convincing yourself that you can do it and finally being ready to do it. I had a colleague tell me this quote a long time ago, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. This quote pops into my head a lot actually, and I don't even love this quote. It kind of sounds negative to me. If I think I can't do something, then I'm right. But it's not saying I can't do something. To me, it's saying if you tell yourself that you can't do something, like we all do, I know I do, then we just won't even try. We need to be positive. When you do something amazing, your friends probably tell you, wow, that's so cool, I could never do that. But I'm sure you say, yes, you could, because you know it's doable for you, and you know it's doable for them. So let's keep encouraging each other, but also ourselves. We can accomplish our goals. Now let's talk more about how to do that and set ourselves up for success. Learning why change can be challenging will help you create a practical plan that guides you through your probable ups and downs. Some changes can be very tough to make. In the book, Changing for Good, psychologists say we are more likely to succeed in reaching our goals and maintaining new behavior when we observe these predictable stages of change. Pre-contemplation. You are becoming aware of a situation that needs changing, though you may not want to change. Others may see that you have a problem. This is a good stage to assess the risk of your behaviors. Are you doing something that could harm you? In this stage, you may underestimate the pros of changing and place too much emphasis on the cons of making a change. So in this stage, you're pr pretty much not ready <laughs> to make a change, probably. Um, contemplation. You are thinking about what you want to change and trying to convince yourself you need to act. Many get stuck here unless they begin to view the change as more important than not changing. In this stage, it's a good place to weigh the pros and cons of changing the behavior. So you could get out a piece of paper and jot down the pros and cons and also identify barriers to that change. Preparation. You decide to make the change and begin creating an action plan. This might include studying the problem, setting a start date, signing up for a class, or consulting your provider or other experts. In this stage, it's great to write down your goals, get your plan down, educate yourself, get your accountability partners lined up, find motivating quotes, books, mantras. This might be a good time to make a vision board if that's something that interests you. Action phase. You are starting a new behavior and controlling your environment to enable the change to happen. In this stage, make sure you're reaching out to your accountability partners. Sharing your goals with friends helps you stay on track and more likely to stick with the plan. And also make sure that you're rewarding yourself as you reach milestones. The final stage is maintenance. You are seeing the benefits of change and you wanna guard your progress. The goal now is preventing relapse while continuing the new behavior. In this stage, continue to reward yourself and develop coping techniques for temptation. Okay, so now you know how to assess where you are at in the stages of change model and some strategies from getting you out of one stage and onto the next. So let's do some goal setting. 
think of a goal you would like to work on. Again, if you're ready to jot down a goal, you're probably in the contemplation stage um, or preparation stage with this particular goal. Go ahead and grab a pen and paper and write that goal down because I think we've all heard that we are more likely to reach a goal if we write it down. And it's important for the goal to be SMART as well. A SMART goal is specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. Specific. The goal must be clear. What do you want to accomplish? Measurable. Are you seeing progress? For example, if you're trying to lose weight, how will you measure that progress? Are you going to get on the scale once a week? Are you going to measure your, your waist to see if you're losing inches? The goal also needs to be attainable. The achievement of attaining a goal reinforces commitment and encourages you to keep going. So you want to make sure the goal is realistic. You can still set huge goals for yourself and um, you know it might take a year to accomplish but also set small attainable goals to get you there. So every few, uh, few weeks we have something to celebrate, something to feel good about, you know, reward yourself <laughs> for getting to that small goal. The goal also needs to be relevant. It needs to make sense for what you're trying to accomplish. Again, this kind of goes back to your why. Why do you want to do this goal? And the goal needs to be time bound. Are you going to start working on this goal today? or tomorrow and then when do you want to complete it by when do you want to lose that 50 pounds by so i just had you write a goal down a couple minutes ago and go ahead and feel free to start making a smart goal let's go over a few other tricks to try a few other questions to ask yourself as you're setting these goals what has worked for you in the past maybe you're trying to get back to healthy eating and a couple of years ago you did really well what were you doing that went so well did you track your diet did you have a friend with a similar goal and you exchanged fun, healthy recipes? Use those tactics that worked well for you. But is there something that got you off track? A very stressful life event or something like that? We can't stop that from happening, but we can plan for setbacks. If you do get off track, give yourself a break and pull yourself up as soon as you can. You've done hard things before and you can again. Pay attention to the benefits you're noticing. Maybe one week you don't see weight loss, but you feel better more energy, you're proud of yourself for getting up early and exercising. Those are all great benefits and should be acknowledged. And lastly, don't forget to reward yourself. A new pair of running gloves, relax and watch your favorite TV show, whatever you want. <laughs> I hope I helped you set your SMART goals today and um, go ahead and take that next step in reaching them. Thanks for listening and have a great day.